As the music played, Henry grew extremely nervous with every passing second. Breathe, breathe, he told himself. The musicians used their oberios, which were basically violins, and harps to set the mood AMD walking pace for the students. Of course, Landon had modernized their violins just for this occasion. Previously, their instruments used the same strings from their crossbows, and its outer shell was made from either wood, metal, and even tortoise shells. But now, Landon had ordered for new instruments to be made from wood and metal, for the strings and nails. Within the hall, the audience was seating on the bleachers, while the middle area had numerous chairs all lined up neatly on it. There was also a massive wide stage ahead of the chairs. As the music played, Three rows of students and teachers walked out in an orderly fashion, with Landon leading the group forward. The teachers led the group wearing black robes, scarfs, and hats, while the students followed behind by wearing all blue. For the teachers, their robes were lined with gold at the collar and shoulder region. In Landon's case, he wore a red robe that literally looked like Harry Potter's Gryffindor Quidditch robe. Of course, he couldn't waste such a grand opportunity just like that. The music continued and everyone walked, steadily, but nervously. They all tried not to look at the crowd. Look, look, that's my boy there. My little girl is now a woman. Little brother, little brother, smile more. The audience pointed and yelled out emotionally as they watched the group of graduating students walk forward. The graduating students tried not to laugh as they kept hearing their names being mentioned. Some of the teachers walked up on stage, while the rest aided the graduates in taking their seats. For this ceremony, Landon had prepared for it to be relatively short and straight to the point. Compared to those back on Earth, there were a total of 187 graduates this year. Before they walked in, there were already several guests seated on the stage. All the overseers were present, as well as Lucius, three government workers, and Dr. Gerson. Once everyone had a seat, they remained standing, and one of the teachers walked towards the podium holding a megaphone in his hand. Welcome to the Baymard Public School graduation ceremony. Now, let's give it up for our graduates. Wow. Clap. Clap. The audience and those on stage clapped loudly and made several approving sounds as they looked at the students who were currently standing below them. All right. I would like to ask the audience to please join our graduates and rise while our military sings our national anthem. Immediately, a group of twelve walked onto the stage holding a flag and megaphones. Three people spread out the large flag, while nine others sang the anthem. This wasn't the first time that the people had heard this anthem. There were books about the anthem, and during every major event, it would be sung for all to hear. As the military men began singing, the audience placed their right hands across their chests and tried to follow the song along. After the anthem, they did a short prayer to their ancestors, followed by a speech from the valedictorian. And lastly, Landon came up to make his speech. Everyone adjusted themselves and sat up upright. One should know that His Majesty's speeches were always moving. The man could move mountains with his words. Graduating class of 1024. Words cannot describe how immensely proud I am of you all. Congratulations. You did it. But... You should always remember that you could never have gotten here alone. Take a look at your families for one moment. Henry turned around and tried to find his family. After looking for a while, he finally spotted his cute little sister waving at him and calling out his name. From where he was sitting, he could tell that his family was overjoyed and pleased with him. This feeling was awesome. As he listened to Landon's speech, he became somewhat emotional. It matters not your gender, social status, or background. Our struggles in this world are mostly similar, at one point in everyone's life. You all have been blessed with the rare opportunity that so many others would kill for. Seize this moment and be the best you can be. I think a lot of people dream. And while they dream, the real happy people, the real successful people, are those that get busy. Time waits for no one. Today, everyone here has blossomed into adulthood. So I expect you all to reflect on yourselves and make the right choices in future. Once again, congratulations graduating class of 1024. Of course Landon had mixed some few famous speeches from Earth, but who would know? Henry clapped, as he was utterly moved. His majesty was right. Time waited for no one, if one only dreamt and never did anything.
then the situation might never change. His Majesty was a clear example of this concept. If His Majesty had still waited for his father to take him back, where would he be now? Clap, clap. Everyone clapped, as they were also touched by Landon's awe inspiring speech. The ceremony proceeded, and it was time for them to receive their certificates. Bro, I'm so nervous. Me too. I didn't realize that we would have to walk up on stage. Calm down. You'll do fine, all right. As Henry conversed with those around him, the butterflies in his tummy had started to act out. They were currently seated in alphabetical order. So he was also sure that everything would happen in that same manner as well. Soon, it was time for his column to get up. He patiently followed the person in front of him and stood at the line. Henry Moores. Boom. Boom. As he climbed the stage, his heartbeat started pounding loudly and heavily. Congratulations. Congratulations. He had just shook Army General Lucius' hand, as well as several other guests on the stage. Finally, he stood in front of His Majesty and was lost for words. Was His Majesty actually going to shake his hands? How could a god touch a mortal's hand so easily? Congratulations, Henry. Remember, be kind, work hard, and stay positive. Your life is in your hands. His Majesty said while shaking his hand. Thank you, Your Majesty. When he walked down the stage, he felt like it was all a dream. He opened his certificate and felt proud. The certificate had the date of today, his name, the school's name and stamp seal, the head of education's name and signature, as well as His Majesty's name and signature on it. He looked at the certificate in his hand and smiled back at his family. My life is in my hands, he thought. After the celebration, Everyone was guided into another hall where they ate and drank. With the money from the guest tickets, the school had organized this meal for them. Landon smiled and decided to head back after a while. With this, Baymard would now welcome 187 new workers. December was finally about to end, and he vowed now focus on serious work. This entire month was a big distraction to Landon. From military graduation and school ceremonies, to Christmas and so on. And now that all this was out of the way, the workers could focus on their jobs with no more holidays or activities hindering them. For New Year, Landon had decided that he wouldn't give them any public holiday. Those who were off on that day could celebrate it, but those who had to work, well, too bad. They had already wasted enough time already. No more public celebrations for the time being. Currently, time had passed by very quickly. And just like that, it was April again. Spring. During the winter, Landon and the workers had been working tirelessly to reach their goals. In January, Landon had thoroughly focused on construction. He began by allocating several workers towards the construction of the Navy's base within District L of the coastal region. One should know that this region was to be divided horizontally from the beach. Hence, each sector here would have its own mini beach in front of it. District I, shipping dock and ports, merchant stores, and so on. District J, Luxury Beach Hotels, and Beach Entertainment. District K. Space which Landon just wanted to keep between the other districts and District L. This space was to create ample distance between the other sectors and military posts in District L. And it also had the waste and recycle management industry within it. District L. Baymard Marine, Coast Guard and Navy stations and posts. So during January, Landon began building the Navy's base which he estimated to be completed in seven months' time, June. He decided to build 15 massive buildings and 10 moderate-sized buildings within the base, as well as several extremely tall fences that kept people out. There would be three main fences that workers would have to pass through before successfully entering the first sector of the base. From there, there'll also be several other gates and checkpoints needed before the workers reach the second, third, and fourth sector of the base and each sector will have multiple weapons to deal with intruders. With the way Landon designed everything, no stray person could easily walk in without access. Apart from the main Navy base in District L, Landon had also decided to build several police stations, Navy posts, and military bases within the other coastal region districts as well. The Navy posts in the other coastal districts will be fenced and have just one building within it, as well as a lighthouse. This lighthouse will be used to scan through the waters of every district, just in case someone wanted to sneak attack them at night. If the Navy men notice anything, 
they were to immediately notify the military, as well as the Navy's base at District L. As for the military posts, although Landon didn't want it to be large, it still needed to be properly fenced as well. It would have four main buildings and a lot of space to keep army tanks and so on. What if an enemy ship successfully made it to the shores? He expected the military to handle them. The Navy had to focus on the sea, but the military had to kill those enemies who managed to make it on Baymard soil. These police stations would definitely have prison cells as well. For example, if some visitors and merchants caused trouble at the docks within District I, Landon expected the police officers to handle the situation immediately. And since these police stations will have cells, then they can just lock them up for a few hours or a day until those involved in brawls calm down. Well, apart from assigning men to start building police offices, military posts, and the Navy's base, Landon also began construction of a radio station within the District C, upper region. He just wanted to construct the station now, so that when the workers were ready to build the radios, there wouldn't be any hiccups on the way. And lastly, he decided to construct a train manufacturing and maintenance industry. These people would be responsible for building trains, fixing, and maintaining them whenever an issue arises. He had planned for this industry to have an assembly line as well, so as to ease manufacturing. Lastly, Landon wanted to start constructing a train manufacturing and maintenance industry. Transportation was a serious problem within Baymart. People would walk for two to three hours just to go to their job sites at the lower region and so on. It was utterly ridiculous. Trains, cars, and buses were a must. Hence Landon decided to focus on this train manufacturing industry which will take two months, March, to complete. But while this industry was being constructed, Landon had still gotten another group of workers to start making the train tracks, as well as placing them all over Baymart as per the city plan. In his mind, it was better to start now than to wait for the industry to be built first. Time was money. Once February came, the workers started constructing the land port and all the military buildings within King's Landing. Construction would be a breeze, since they had cranes, loaders, excavators, aerial work platforms, and so many other heavy machines available. Landon had estimated that construction would only last for five months. Hence, it was essential for the men to begin immediately. As for the fortified city walls, they had started working on them in October. And by May, eight months total, everything should be completed. Up next, Landon focused on making antennas, receivers, transmitters, and other parts needed to produce these radios. The workers had been taking his classes for two months now, December to January. So it was time that they start making all the parts, as well as building all those massive antenna structures all over Baymart. Within this month, paper money also began to circulate. And the people and workers at the bank became more pleased. No more heavy pockets, no more loosing coins here and there. Money became more convenient for them. There were five types of bills that were made. 100, 50, 20, 10, and 5 BM bills, where BM was short for Baymart. Landon's face was on a pale yellowish 100 BM bill, while his mother Kim's face was on a green 50 BM bill. Of course, Lucia's face was on a reddish 20 BM bill, the image of Lucy was on a bluish 10 BM bill, and the image of the castle was on a purplish 5 BM bill. And of course, each bill had the words Baymart on it, as well as several letters and numbers on them. Well, with creating these paper notes, the images, words, and numbers were all engraved on a steel plate. From there, a special die was placed only on the engraved sections of the steel plate. Of course, following that, a light sheet of plastic was placed on the steel sheet and baked for eight minutes in low heat. And once it was done, the die on the sheet transferred to the plastic, forming the exact image and design outline on the plastic. In fact, the process was somewhat lengthy. But long story short, the printing industry had successfully created paper notes for all the citizens. Once February ended, Landon and the workers immediately began working on all his plans for March. The first thing he focused on was radio manufacturing. Communication was also essential in times like this. If there was a serious crisis at hand, how were the citizens supposed to prepare themselves? Running up and down was never the answer. Word needed to get out fast, and having a proper means to communicate was key. When the workers started making these devices, there were a lot of issues, like finding the right wavelength and so on. But after three weeks of constant failure, they had finally reached a breakthrough thanks to Landon. 
Landon had just let them be, because he wanted them to make their own discoveries on their own. Every day, the workers would focus on their radios and try to solve problems here and there. It was like a school assignment that they had to finish. Anyone who had ever gone to university back on Earth would know how much energy one could put in when they wanted to complete an assignment. They sat in groups around their radios, took the device apart, and tried to make it perfect. They had sleepless nights as they tried to get the answer from their textbooks. Where did they go wrong? At the start of the month, Landon had created 10 samples for them to follow. They had used their calculators, as well as the formulas within their physics books, and were stuck on it for a while. They had erased, drawn, and calculated the same thing over and over again, but could never arrive at the right answer. This was sorcery. When they were at home, their minds would wander back to the problem they were facing, and they immediately felt like all the studying that they had done from December to February was for nothing. That was three months for heaven's sake. Back on Earth, that would be a whole semester. Were they truly that stupid? All the main formulas were short and simple. So what were they missing? Like, they had understood and read the concepts, but why was practical work always so different from theory? They felt like even if they studied for several more years, they might never get it. But fortunately, His Majesty took pity on them and after three weeks, they corrected all their mistakes all the while explaining where they went wrong. And once they finally realized their errors, they redid their work and tried creating these radios from scratch all by themselves. Some of them could even create frequencies and waves using other metal pieces. And even coins. It was so surprising. Moving on, Landon decided to focus on the newly constructed industries. The ship and boat manufacturing industry had been successfully completed, hence he decided to start making Navy warships as well as fishing boats and ships, the train manufacturing and maintenance industry that began construction in January. Of course, Landon immediately put the men to work in creating new trains. With this new industry completed, Landon began assigning workers to build several train stations at different locations within Baymart. At this point, these construction workers were always busy. When they finished building anything, Landon would immediately give them a new project and ship them off. And at the start of every month, each construction group would increase in size due to the addition of new citizens. Without these new citizens, how could Baymard have enough workforce for all these projects? For now, it was okay. But once July came, Landon would put a stop to taking in more citizens, unless it was absolutely necessary. One of the industries that had just been completed this month was the weapon manufacturing industry. With its completion, Landon began producing long-range artillery weapons. He had decided to focus on creating stationary howitzer guns and rocket launchers on the city walls. For these weapons, one could imagine the guns or rockets launchers that were usually placed on war tanks. What Landon wanted was to place these machines on the city walls, as well as on the different military posts within the coastal region. One could never be too prepared when tackling an enemy. He also decided to make taser guns for the guards and police officers, as well as bulletproof vests and other safety gears. Walkie-talkies were also made and distributed to all military, guard, and police personnel within this period. For now, Landon was focusing on strengthening the soldiers and safeguarding the city walls and perimeters. July was coming fast, and the safety needed to be guaranteed before that. Up next, Landon had decided to focus on traffic lights and car sensory detectors. Soon, highway contraction will begin, so it was essential for these lights to be readily available before then. Finally, for the month of March, Landon had began construction of the People's Temple. Yes, a temple. The people had been requesting that he build one. Their reason was simple. They felt grateful to their ancestors and wanted a way to thank them. Landon wasn't opposed to the idea at all. Like he said, no one had the right to deny any one of their beliefs. All major cities had temples. There were money temples, worshipping temples, and even sex-driven temples. And since some of the slaves were sensitive to the word temple, Landon decided to change its name and call it a church. The people had requested for a place where they could pray, have heavenly teachings, and give offerings, money, and other worldly possessions to their ancestors in exchange for blessings. With all this in mind, Landon had decided to let them appoint several church leaders and members themselves. But the leaders AMD members would have to meet Landon weekly to say how these offerings were being used. 
Landon had decided that the church would have its workers and leaders have services on weekdays at 7 a.m., Saturday at 9 a.m. and 5 p.m., and Sunday services at 9 a.m., 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. These leaders would have to take these jobs full-time. They would also have to visit the sick in the hospital, as well as do charity work here and there. Landon expected the church leaders to encourage and lead the people towards the path of righteousness and goodness. In fact, for this one, Landon was ready to fabricate a whole Bible about their ancestors just for them. What he wanted to do was build their character. He didn't want them to think that raping, beating, or killing people with no reason was fine. Greed and other sins would always lead one to their end. So he wanted the people to grow a coincidence whenever they were tempted. But of course, he also wanted to paint a vivid picture of hell for them. For their offerings, he would allow them to choose what they wanted to do with it. Did they want to send the money to unfortunate people outside Baymard? Then maybe Santa could open up an orphanage around his stores and take care of the people. Of course, if that truly happened, Landon would also travel to those places to also see things for himself. He would never allow for money meant for the poor or the sick to be advised by greedy people. Even though Santa was upright, that didn't mean that all his subordinates were like him. And when people live around areas where crime is okay in the people's eyes, temptation was always present. In Landon's opinion, Santa was truly upright because he grew up in Corona. As a noble, it was rare for one to be upright. They existed, but it was truly rare. And sometimes, even the best people could change due to their environment. That's why Landon wanted to make the people grow a conscience. Sometimes, no matter how much one is tempted, their conscience wouldn't allow them to sin. As for the church leaders and members, of course their salaries would come from part of the offerings as well. They too are human beings as well. They needed to eat, pay their bills and even drive good cars. So should they suffer and dress in rags because they are holy people? That's ridiculous. It wasn't a crime for a holy man to live well, provided he or she didn't steal the money. Anyway, Landon had used these four months to completely focus on construction. And now, spring had come and April was finally here. Time for Baymard to move towards phase two of his plans. Little bro, what the hell is that? Santa looked at the huge monster-like carriage, heavy machine, as it continued construction on what seemed an uncompleted building. It's been a month since Landon had asked for several police stations, military and navy posts to be built. He felt like his brain had just witnessed something that was supposed to be impossible. If he ever told what he saw to anyone else, no one would believe him. For sure, they would call him a liar. Where were the horses that were supposed to push the carriage? Was it magic? Little bro, is it for sale? Ah, don't smile at me so mysteriously. Little bro, how can you tease me like this? You know that I'm a merchant, yet you allowed me to see such a thing? How is this fair? The more he looked at the machine, the more he felt like crying. It's been a long time since something could get him all excited like this. And yet it wasn't for sale. He knew the reasons to why his bro didn't sell these carriages. But still, he was a merchant for heaven's sake. Just watching these machines operate made his eyes bleed out. Looking at Landon's smile, he coiled in help but wonder what else felt Baymard could be hiding. This place wasn't as simple as everyone thought it was. It wasn't just him. His own crew felt like they had just seen a miracle. Bro, tell me the truth. What the hell is going on in your city? Santa asked excitedly. He could feel his whole body shake the more he looked at the carriage. Hee hee, don't worry, you'll know in July. July? Santa asked curiously. Yeah, July. I plan to open Baymar to the public in July. Oh, that reminds me. Here are ten passes for you. When and if you decide to come over, bring anyone you want to and use these passes. Of course, don't forget keep one for yourself as well. Basically, these passes will allow you or your family to have easy access into Baymard when you arrive. Santa was so amazed by the night he passes that he forgot to respond or even thank Landon for them. Was this still paper? How come it had a different color and design from the normal yellowish colored parchment paper? The passes were thicker than normal paper and were all black in color. To be honest, they were as hard as a credit card back on earth. These passes were deep dark blue in color and had the words V.P Pass and Baymart on them. 
Of course, the expiration date for the passes was also written on them as well, and each pass had a rope around it for the owners to wear around their necks. Santa looked at the cards in amazement. He wanted to ask how they were made, but something in him told him that this little bro of his wouldn't give up for no one. Sigh. The disappointments of a merchant. So how do these passes work? Normally when you arrive, you'll need to get your documents made at any of the checkpoints. But this will pass. You could just use the VIP station. Rather than waiting online like everyone else, you'll be attended to immediately and your documents will be processed ASAP. For the passes, Landon was the only one who could give them out. Hence, when the workers saw Santa, they would immediately know that he was his person. Santa had aided Baymard for months now, and Landon thought that it wouldn't be fair to let him have the same treatment as others. Apart from Santa and his family, everyone else had to wait in line, even if they were kings of other empires. Wait, wait, little bro, you lost me there. Documentations? Santa asked confusedly. He had traveled all around the Pino continent, and usually, he just paid his say in. No one checked if he was a bad person or good person, provided there was enough money to pay. He had no idea what Landon meant by documentation. You'll know when you come back in July. Speaking of which, did you get my message? Sorry, bro. I got it, but I was a bit tied up at the moment. That's why I couldn't rush back since then, Santa replied as he puffed out his jaws and batted his eyelids at Landon. His pleading puppy dog face had truly made Landon speechless. This guy was as shameless as ever, Landon thought. Truthfully, Santa had wanted to come as soon as possible. But would Penelope let him go? Nope. She had insisted that since he was almost killed, then it was her job to protect him and also ensure that he trained more. She had watched him like a hawk, watching its prey for the past four months now. Honestly, he had attempted to flee on multiple occasions. But of course, he was always caught. She had placed posters and sketches of him around the empire, as if he were a wanted criminal. If anyone saw him escaping, they were to report it immediately and get their reward. She had also stationed her most trusted knights to block all entrances and exits of his estate. Wherever he wanted to go, they would follow. In his opinion, she was a bit too protective. Sigh. What could he do? This was definitely his punishment for falling in love with an overly caring woman. Could there be anyone more pitiable than he was? He had even been caught once, when he tried to climb a tree and scale the fence. Within this period, Penelope had organized her feelings and had told her family that he was the one she was going to marry. She had truly treated him like a wife instead. Not that he minded anyway. She was a domineering and stubborn woman, and he was a chilled person so they were a perfect fit. Of course, within this time, her family had given him he Astrasgel. How could they allow a softy like him to be with their princess? Never. They trained him day and night, until his legs became wobbly. His weight glad also gone done, and he was more fit than he usually was. But so what? He wanted to go back to his carefree days, where he would eat, sleep, and think. And to make matters worse, his own father would come to his estate and train him as well. Yes, he had finally made up with his father and brothers. Previously, they didn't get along with him because he had chosen to be a merchant instead of a knight. How could anyone not want to serve such a noble and good royal family? Anyway, now that Santa had sat down with them and explained his reasons for being a merchant, they had become close. But instead of sympathizing with him, his family continued training him like he was about to go to war. He had never been so happy to escape from Corona. When Penelope gave him a pass, he almost cried with joy. The pass only granted him to go to Baymard and come back. If he even thought about delaying his trip, then he wouldn't be able to travel for another two years. That was his punishment. Of course, he wouldn't even think about it, since he knew how strict Penelope could be. Seeing Landon now, he felt like crying and complaining to his bro. Other people's wives would blush and get shy, but why was his own case different? Bro, you have no idea what I went through, okay? Anyway, I too have something important to tell you as well. Santa began narrating his experience with those thugs to Landon. And when he was done, Landon in turn gave him the letters and maps to the illegal underground sex camps within Corona. Santa was so shocked that he felt his hairs stand up. The royal family and the people had worked hard in keeping Corona free from such activities. 
But this Nopline guy dared to create them? Santa knew that he would soon be Penelope's king, so any problem or threat targeted at Corona was also part of his concern. Thinking about it now, he was fortunate that Landon had an upright personality. If another noble knew of this scheme, they would have used it against Corona instead. Santa stood quietly for a while as he tried to calm himself down. This was Nopline they were talking about. The guy had the forces that could rival an entire empire. If they made any wrong moves, this guy could even launch a full-scale attack on Corona. This guy could literally send ships to attack them and dominate the empire if he chooses to. It was either they risked it and rescued all those people, or they pretended like they didn't know anything. But he knew deep within his soul that there was no way in hell that he or the royal family, and even the people, could allow such a crime to go unpunished. But what should he do? Why not stay for two more days and have my men and myself follow you back? Landon said calmly. Truth be told, this was a golden opportunity in Landon's eyes. This was the perfect hostage scenario mission for the men to undergo. Training could never beat the real thing. Landon thought that it wasn't a big deal for them to aid Corona, as he didn't want to give Nopline a reason to conquer Corona. Plus, he had a bone to pick with the guy as well. How dare he try to make the people of Baymard slaves? His plan was to rescue the slaves, destroy all underground camps, and let Nopline know that it was Baymard that did it, and not Corona. He would only let one person escape with a message to Nopline. And by the time the message got through, July would have already arrived. Even if Nopline wanted to attack, Landon was sure that he would be blasted to pieces. Be it on land or sea, Baymard's forces would be unstoppable by July. Santa was both touched and worried. Why was this brother of his so reckless? Little bro, I can't allow you to do that. I, if you take me as your brother, then you would allow me to aid you in your time of need. Even though you don't believe me right now, I guarantee that I won't be at the loosing end. Santa looked at his little bro who was oozing with confidence and was at loss for words. What more could he say? Fine. I'll listen to you, he said, while raising his hands up in defeat. Why did this brother of his remind him so much of his wife-to-be? Landon thought for a while and realized a huge problem. The warships would only be completed in June, and Baymard didn't have any boats at the moment. He needed a ride. Elder bro, can you give us a lift to Corona and back? As well as leave us some of your crew men who could aid us in manning the ship? Currently, he hadn't taught the men about sailing. So it would be difficult to man the ship without an experienced crew. That's definitely not a problem. It's the least I can do, since you're taking care of this problem for Corona. Santa said while nodding. All right, since I don't want you or Corona to be implicated, send two ships back and leave one ship with me. Landon said, Okay, but I'm coming with you on this mission. Don't worry, I'll properly disguise myself up. This way, no one will be able to link me with Corona. Landon thought for a while and agreed. Santa probably felt guilty for putting him in such a dangerous situation and nothing he would say would change the guy's mind. So why not agree? All right, I accept. Within this two-day period, Landon wanted to choose and brief the soldiers on their new mission. He also wanted to select soldiers who would stay and protect Baymard city gates if any attacks occurred within his time if absence. Truth be told, he knew that his half-brother Eli should have already arrived at the capital, and Landon had a hunch that he should be sending his minions to Baymard anytime soon, so he needed the men to completely wipe them out. And judging from the distance between the capital and here, Landon was guessing that they should arrive in May or June at most. The second wall was 92% completed. By the end of this April, and at most the first weeks of May, Landon expected it to be finished. Long story short, he would leave Lucius in control for all decisions linked to Baymard's safety. He also wanted to use this period to plan out all industry and construction activities within this month and the next. Depending on how long the mission would take, Landon was sure that he would be back at the start of June. So he had to give out plans for this April as well as May. And just in case he came back in late June, then he also had to give the people June's work plan as well. All he knew was that he would be back at most two weeks, before the grand opening in July. So little bro you mean that I'll finally be able to see what you've got in your city? Santa asked curiously. Of course, but you all will stay in the castle with me. Just know that whatever you see now, 
will only be the tip of the iceberg for what Baymard will offer in July. I guarantee you that this place is like no other within Hurtfilia. Santa looked at Landon doubtfully. Granted, he was impressed with those monster-like carriages, but that didn't mean that he would believe that an entire city could change because of those carriages. He had been to so many cities and towns, and even though they were beautiful, they still had the same things that other cities had. Water was still being fetched from the wells, people still used torches and every basic necessity was the same. So just how different could Baymard truly be? There was no way that this city would be different from others. Or so Santa thought. F asterisk CK it. He took it all back. This place was definitely heaven. As he and his crewmen sat in the double-decker bus with Landon, as their eyes beamed out at all the magnificent buildings and carriages passing by, they looked around, and their breaths were almost blown away. The clean roads ran in a neat, orderly grid pattern that enabled the onlookers to know what was beyond the numerous buildings and narrow roads around the highway. The beautifully crafted buildings all had various shapes and sizes that were made from strange materials that Santa couldn't identify. While driving in the carriage, he truly felt like he was in another world. He could see the citizens walking around in their beautifully tailored clothes as they walked about minding their own businesses. Some were boarding other carriages, while others were going in and out of these godlike buildings frequently. If the heavens truly existed, then Santa would have sworn that it would look just like Baymard right now. His hands began to tremble slightly as he took in the scene in front of him. Marvelous, he thought. You said that this moving carriage is called a bus? Santa asked as he kept touching the seat in front of him. The bus was red in color and had the Baymard's flag and name painted on it, as well as the words, tour bus on it. Of course, the second floor if the Decker bus was open-roofed, which allowed the men to have a better view of the city. Seriously, little bro, can I just get one bus? Santa asked helplessly. How could he see all these things and let it go? Landon just looked at him and smiled wryly. Obviously, the answer was a no. As they moved forward, they saw the workers constructing several new buildings within each district. One should know that it was currently eight months since the residential builders had started construction. So of course they were done with the residences. With the homes completed, Landon had immediately instructed for them to build several other buildings in other districts ages ago. One should know that Landon was following Asia's standards when doing construction. In Landon's opinion, it was either Europe or North America was too lazy or too stingy when it concerned construction. Landon could still remember numerous incredible feats that Asians had done back on Earth. For example, in 2015, these people had built a massive 57-story tower in a matter of 19 days. That's 57 stories tall in 19 days for God's sake. 57. The rest of the world would probably take two or three years to do it. But with Asians, new, they didn't believe in wasting time. For example, the rest of the world would only hire 100 to 200 people to build such buildings. But with Asians, they could just hire thousands of people at once, just to get it done early. I mean, if you have the raw materials and people, why wait forever? It makes no sense. Just construct the damn building. These people could build 2,000 homes in just one week, but the rest of the world would take years to achieve that same feat. In Asia, even getting approval for construction could be done in a matter of days, but the rest of the world would approve these documents in a matter of months, and sometimes even years. People usually did their work half-heartedly and would take time just to read a single report, but Asians wouldn't waste any time and get it done ASAP. Their system was built on time and efficiency. Those people were the most efficient people that existed on Earth. And that was a fact. There were also many cases where they had built 15-story to even 25-story buildings in a matter of six to nine days. And yet the rest of the world would use months and years to do that. If one looked at these construction sites, they would see more than 500 heavy machines building all at once. But the rest of the world would only use 50 to 70 machines. Unbelievable. Landon was talking about people who used 14 days to install train tracks for a distance that would take the rest of the world a year to install. They used 2,000 people just to build it fast. But yet, the rest of the world would hire just 100 to 200 people for the job. Why wouldn't it take years to complete? Tesk. Stingy people. So in conclusion, the world was either lazy or stingy compared to them. 
H asterisk CK. These people could build ships in a matter of days, yet the rest of the world would do it in years. Nah, there was no way that he would use the Western world as his standard. As far as he was concerned, they were backwards when compared to Asia. Even when building their bridges, technology, cars, and so on. They never spent so long to build them like the rest of the world. As for Landon, he had the people, he had the raw materials. And for God's sake, he had thousands of heavy machines. So what exactly would stall him from building fast? Unlike the Western world that would use 3 to 7 people to build a single home, Landon used 27 to 50 people to do so. And for large enterprises, he used thousands to build them. Instead of a measly 100. So really, what would stop him in developing the place fast? Like he had said, he didn't know if the rest of the world was lazy or just stingy. Or maybe their project budgets could only use 100 people instead of 1000s. Who knew? Anyway, the construction workers within Baymard had been building a lot of empty buildings as of late. They didn't know what these buildings were for, but since their king had requested them to be built, then they had just followed the design plans for these buildings and constructed them. Time was money. Well, instead of something like a 57-story building, Landon had preferred 5 to 15-story buildings all around Baymard within the various districts. Also, some of the workers had been reading the palace within this time, as well as most of the estates within the upper region. Driving through the massive city, Santa was thoroughly convinced by Landon's words. Baymard was definitely one of a kind. It was more than that. It was a whole new world. Once they arrived at the palace gate, Santa and his men were amazed by how majestic the palace looked. Landon had long requested for the palace to be renovated so as to resemble the iconic Whaley Disney Castle logo. So what Santa and his men were feeling right now was what he had felt the first time he had visited Disneyland. Of course, during the renovation period, the workers had broken down parts of the floor and walls so as to connect pipes, electricity, and so on. The soaring majestic castle was bold on the blue beyond, giving off a celestial feel to it. It stood there as if conjured from a child's fairy tale imagination. It was simply perfect. The towering whitish gray walls gave a beautiful blend with the bluish cord roofs. Some of the castle walls had two feet tall windows and several balconies that were positioned at various points around the structure. There were also 21 buildings, other mini castles, and tall glass buildings within the palace premises that were similar to the main castle in design. The men had never seen any castle like this. Although Landon had made sure to retain most of the castle's features, he had still gone out of his way to renovate it to have a modern touch as well. This sort of palace could definitely make most of the rulers die from envy. At the palace gate, there was a huge towering golden colored gate that wrote, the royal palace on it. Once they neared the gate, five guards walking towards the bus, while several others remained seated within the left and right office posts of the gate. The men checked the driver's I.D card and palace pass, and once they were done, the driver drove in. They passed through several buildings, as well as several fountains, statues, pole thingies, pole lights, and once they stepped into Landon's actual castle, Santa felt like he was going to faint from excitement. That's it. Don't try to change my mind. I'm staying here forever. He exclaimed frantically. The floors were decked with beautiful white marble tiles, and the grayish colored walls were elegantly decorated with large paintings and several oversized mirrors. Bro, how come I can see my reflection so clearly? Santa asked in amazement as he touched his face multiple times while looking at the mirrors on the walls. This was the first time that he had actually seen his real appearance. Is this what I truly look like? He thought. One should know that what they used were used polished copper or silver plates that showed just 20 to 30 percent of their true reflections. All the crewmen couldn't help looking at themselves as well. I need to shave my beards. I need to trim my hair. I need to grow out my chest hairs. Once they were all shown the bathrooms, everyone screamed in excitement. So you mean that this thing will let out water when we need it to? And this other thing here is soap? Wait, you said there is heating within the rooms as well? So this toothbrush thing is for keeping our mouths clean? And where is the fire for the light? How come there's no fire? Everyone had immediately forgot that Landon was a king and literally clamored him with questions here and there. Of course he didn't mind and politely answered them. 
And when he showed them their beds and individual rooms, they felt like they didn't want to go back to Corona anytime soon. At first, the men were scared to wrinkle such clean and beautiful beddings. But when they finally succumbed to the temptation before them, they were utterly shocked. The beds, pillows, and even the blankets were as soft as a baby's buttocks. It was at that moment that they had all made up their minds to follow their master, Santa, back to Baymard for the grand opening. How could their master be so shameless as to enjoy these comforts first without them? Was it really fair? They had already agreed to keep their mouths shut when they got back, lest someone else dared to take their spot for the trip. One should know that their master had over thousands of workers around him. What if the others got all excited and wanted to take their spot as crew members for that trip? No way. They would definitely come back for the grand opening. Once everyone was shown their rooms, Santa immediately pulled him to the side. Little bro, I'll be honest with you, can I buy a house here? Santa asked curiously. Actually, it isn't possible for any visitors to get homes yet. But, they could still rent out luxury suites and even luxury homes within the visitor base districts when they arrived. They could rent them for the period of time that they had to stay here. They could also rent cars, as well as pay for chauffeurs and so on. No one was supposed to drive without passing their driver's lessons, so only chauffeurs could drive these visitors around. So what you're saying is that I can only get them when I come back in July. Can I even book it now in advance? I want my family to have the best options, Santa said while pouting. Landon was really helpless when facing this guy. He didn't know why Santa was so worried about people taking the best spot before he did. Even though Baymard would be accessible to the public in July, who would know the opening date? He had roughly guessed that people would actually start to coming to the city around October time. Firstly, it would take time for people to start paying attention to Baymart. For example, during this mission with Knopline, he had surmised that Knopline would probably receive the news around late July or August. And even if he wanted to attack, Knopline would need time to organize his soldiers. So there was no way that Knopline's attack would come anytime soon. And even if it did, Knopline wasn't aware of the weapons at the front gates, so the fool would only be sending more people to their deaths at Baymard's hands. Eli's case was exactly the same as well. When his men wouldn't return from war, then he would probably have to send a larger group on a four-month journey towards Baymard. In this era, there was literally no better means of communication or transportation, so everything took time to accomplish. Lastly, even if Santa comes here for a month or two and goes back, it would still take time for news about Baymar to travel around. So, Landon knew that Santa and his family would literally be the only ones to come here in July. Yes, Baymar was going to be open to the public in July, but why should he announce it to all his enemies? Let them bloody hell find out on their own. This would also give him a lot of time to make and perfect weapons around Baymar. So why should he be worried? Just thinking about it now, Landon speculated that his father would probably get wind of his success around November or December. Who knows? All in all, Landon was sure that no one would truly give Baymard a hard time this year. If it were back on Earth, people could easily use landlines or phones to pass out information. But unfortunately within this period, news could travel for several months on horseback before anyone could receive it. Bro, I don't think you don't have to worry about fighting with others for the best home. Landon said as he giggled. Ah, uh, that reminds me. Bro, you said earlier that only Baymard's money could be used here. So what do I do when I want anything in July? Santa knew that his bro wouldn't allow him to buy and ship these goods now. So he decided to suck it up and wait till the grand opening. He had seen Landon's wristwatch and was so fascinated by it. For heaven's sake, the thing could tell the time. This damn brother of his was truly killing him. On the bus, Landon had shown him all the currencies within Baymart, which amazed him greatly. His little bro's face was actually drawn on money. How was that even possible? After entertaining Santa for a while, Landon immediately called for all the overseers, as well as the high-ranking military personnel to come to the palace. It was time to get serious. System, I'd like to buy a capsule for an hour using my technology points. Landon said, he needed to quickly write Baymard's development plan for the next three months before he left for this mission. One hour in the real world was equivalent to five days within the capsule. The system has processed the host request. Teleporting host now, 
Vrup? Landon had appeared in a large white hall. The entire room resembled those white rooms that one saw in movies. The floor, ceiling, walls, and even the tables, couches, and chairs were immaculate white. Although he had the option of modifying the room, Landon still preferred for it to remain like so. This way, he could concentrate better. Having color and other distracting objects will only distract him and slow down his progress in time. After all, he got this place to concentrate and not to relax or play. He walked towards his office table and pulled open the first two drawers which had unused notebooks and pens in them. For phase two and three of his plan, Landon had planned to focus on entertainment and food. There were a lot of unused buildings that had been built around the districts, especially within the entertainment districts. Typically, District D should have things like side bank branches, luxury hotels, luxury villas for guests, amusement parks, zoo, car stores, malls, main bus station, and so on. While District G would have regular hotels for visitors, bank branches, Baymard National Park, bars, stores, and so on. For the next three months, Landon expected the workers to focus on these entertainment centers. Go-kart racing, national park, bowling, trampoline rooms, restaurants slash cafe, painting and sculpting, bars, gym, roller skating, skateboarding, obstacle course games houses, large indoor adventure playground homes, multiple street shops and stores that focused on food like pizza, burgers, body care products, books, plates, clothes, and even plastic toys. Although the new mall in the upper region would be completed and opened by July, he had to admit that having individual stores within the central region was still a good business move for Baymart. The largest mall was at the upper region, but those who would stay at District G of the lower region might need night snacks and other items at inconvenient times. Hence, it was good to have individual stores scattered around the city. For entertainment, even though Landon couldn't make things like amusement parks, laser tag rooms, planetariums, aquariums, zoos, arcades, and other fun activities yet, he was somewhat confident that the current activities would still be able to capture the heart of their visitors. For spas, Landon had already written down a list of oils and lotions that he needed Alchemy Industry to produce. They also had to build saunas, facial masks, body scrubs, and so on. He needed them done within these three months. At this point, Landon was purely thinking about business. No matter what era it was, women were always obsessed with beauty and staying forever young. For beauty, they could even drain all their own money as well as their husband's or boyfriend's pockets just to buy products that would keep them forever young. Landon didn't see anything wrong in capitalizing on that. Anyway, he was focused on making products and equipments that weren't high-tech, like laser hair removal treatment machines, scar removal machines, and so on. He only wanted basic things like smooth and polished massaging stones, towels, nail fillers, nail clippers, and other basic tools. Of course, the oils and chemicals would be made available by the alchemy industry. For the national park within the central region, Landon just needed them to create walkways, benches, staff buildings, as well as transport trees and flowers to the park. Like he had said, the area had a plain terrain. So the grass was already low, but the trees were scarce. No matter how Landon looked at it, parks were always filled with trees and flowers. Hence they needed to transport them immediately. The area Landon had chosen was the area where the streams converge, forming a massive pond, which leads back to the coastal region. As for the gym, Landon wanted a painted running track within one of the floors, as well as basic equipments like jump ropes, dumbbells, barbell and benches press weights, indoor cycle bikes, and machines that worked using pulleys and string systems. Landon wasn't going to make that were digitalized like treadmills and so on. Those would of course be made in the future. He also wanted the gym to have several multipurpose courts for tennis, squash, badminton, and volleyball. Of course, there would be courts for basketball and indoor soccer as well. Also, when visitors came, they could also sign up for workout classes, as well as dance, cycling, or yoga classes in one of the empty rooms. Once Landon came back, he would make sure that he personally picked out instructors and showed them what to do for every class. He would also teach them what to do if someone wanted to lose weight or gain muscle. These activities were good for everyone, not just the visitors. As for things like toy stores, Landon wanted plastic and rubber toys and puzzles for both girls and boys, 
He wanted to make simple toys and games that weren't electronic. He wanted Legos, yo-yos, baby rattles, hoopla hoops, pogo sticks, and of course toys that look like the princesses and characters from all the fairy tale books within Baymart. He also wanted to make children costumes from all the books that he had made. He had already written about Superman, Spider-Man, Batman, Wonder Woman, and a few more, as well as Sleeping Beauty and other popular Disney princesses. Even though the children didn't know how their favorite characters looked, the toys would have the character's name on it. So with time, he was sure that these girls would want their tiaras, wands, and sparkly dresses to look like their favorite characters. And the boys would also like to be superheroes as well. There would also be teddy bears, mythical toys like dragons, My Little Pony, and Barbie dolls within the toy stores. With all the books about Barbie's adventures out, how could he not make this plastic doll? For outdoor toy sets, he wanted to make plastic playhouses, plastic slides and swings for children, toy basketball hoops, soccer goal posts, and sandboxes. For things like puzzles and board games, Landon was thinking of snakes and ladders, Scrabble, the game of life, Monopoly, princess-themed board games, Twister, Uno, and regular card games. With all these toys and games in mind, Landon was sure that Baymard could do without things like Xboxes, Playstations, Game Boys, arcade games, and the internet for the time being. For arts and craft, paint, and sculpting classes, Landon had decided to place them together and make more games within those buildings so as to call in more people, like adding scavenger hunts, House of Mirrors, murder mysteries with hired actors, and other thought-provoking games. Apart from all these things, the main attraction areas would be the buildings that host things like trampoline park, multiple obstacle course, bowling, children game homes with bouncy castles, go-kart racing, roller skating, and skateboarding buildings. Hence Landon needed the workers to create bowling boards, roller skates, skateboards, and other items needed for these games. So far, these were all the things that Landon had decided to focus on. With entertainment taken care of, Landon began to focus on phase three, food. Within these three months, he wanted the food industry, as well as the chefs to produce. Sugar, from the six-month grown sugar beets, biscuits, popcorn, pretzel sticks, pretzel buns, pizza, sandwiches, pastries, waffles and pancakes, fried wings with different seasonings, and lastly, ice cream. Processed sugar was absolutely a must. Right now, the people just crushed sweet foods and fruits and used the juices as sugar, since honey was somewhat expensive for the average household to afford. Foods like sugar beets, strawberries, and so on were used daily by the people. For drinks, he wanted lemonade, smoothies, and milkshakes. If the workers followed his instructions and the cooks followed his recipes, then with time, he was sure that they would perfect the taste before these three months were up. For the first month, he expected these goods to not be all that good. But with time, he was sure that it would be even tastier. After all, the chefs had to make these every day for the next three months. That's 90 days doing the same thing over and over again. No matter what, they were sure to get it right within this time frame. Since he was making these foods, Landon had also decided to make electric cookers, fridges slash freezers, and blenders. The ice cream and in drinks needed to be cooled for the customers, and the workers needed reliable cookers for fast-paced customer service. Also, since he couldn't make things like Fanta, Coke, wine, or other beverages, things like smoothies were a perfect choice. Hence he had to make blenders. And because he was going to make hotels, Landon had also made up his mind to make washing and drying machines. With phase two and three out of the way, Landon continued with development. There were just four things that Landon wanted done within this period. First, he needed a seaport constructed. So in essence, he needed a proper harbor for ships to dock and sail within District I. He also needed another large building which was similar to the landport or airport. And of course at the back of the building, there would be a car park for the buses to carry these visitors to and from Baymart. Landon decided to call this building the Coastal Port. The building would be a little distance away from the harbor and the beachy sand. In general, Landon decided that he would basically bar the entire coastal area. So he would have the men put four meters tall iron fences and gates around the area. For this, they just had to dig up the ground in a straight horizontal line all around the coastal region using those heavy machines. From there, they would place the iron fences into the ground, 
and place some in around it. Landon wanted them to do this a four meters away from the sand. Back on Earth, there were a lot of fences beach areas that spanned for miles away, especially those around Navy bases or other military bases. Blocking and controlling the crowd was paramount for safety. Of course, the fences would have barbed wires, as well as gates and doors at certain points, so as to let visitors or officers in and out of Baymart. There would also be guard tower posts at particular points around the fence for safety. So when people arrive at the harbor, they would have to proceed to the gates, and from there, they would walk into Station 1 for check-in services. In future, when Landon made a beach resort, the gates within District J will open up at particular times for the guests to swim if they wanted to. Within District I, Landon also wanted to construct another building for storing goods that were meant to be shipped out or transported into Baymart. This place was basically a storage facility. Up next, Landon wanted the workers to focus on upgrading the various industries. So far, they had already began modifying the military, school, government buildings, and hospital. In short, they had primarily focused on making the estates within the upper region have a blend between modern and ancient architecture. But right now, Landon needed them to focus and expand the industries within the lower region. He wanted them to have water, heat, and electricity as well as for them to have proper structures, gates, and so on. Also, he needed the lower region areas that were facing the central region to be fenced off as well. Only those who work within these regions can have access to them. Moving on, Landon had wanted the men to start building several gas stations around Baymart as well. They had built numerous buildings, but only one gas station had actually been built. Landon needed at least three stations in each district, so they needed to get that done immediately. So with all this happening, he had decided to make fire extinguishers as well. One could never be too sure. Finally, Landon needed the men to build a proper police headquarters, as well as a prison facility. Once he was done, he quickly left the time capsule and immediately sent for the overseers. And after dealing with them, he sent for Lucius and all the major military personnel. As arrived, Landon ushered them toward his study. The study was broad with a large table at the front as well as several couches, bookshelves, and side tables neatly positioned within it. Please, have a seat, Landon said while gesturing towards the grayish-colored couches. Everyone was puzzled by Landon's actions. Usually, Landon would head on towards the military base to see them. This was the first time that they had been called into his study. Somehow, they all felt extremely nervous, as if Baymard was currently in attack. They could feel butterflies churning in their bellies. Ten minutes passed by, and all the men had gotten the gist of it. Landon then spoke in private with Lucius and came out with a detailed military plan. Gary, you and 500 soldiers will follow me to Corona. When you get back, make a list of those who you want to work with, and briefly them on the mission. We set out in two days' time, so I expect you all to be prepared by then. Yes, your majesty, Gary answered. Mark. You will take six soldiers and head on towards Riverdale City for two and a half months. During this mission, you are to leave all Baymard products here and head out with only a dagger and enough money to keep you fed and housed there. I need you to pick both female and male companions for this journey. Your identity is that of a married man, so I expect another female to act as your wife. Stay there and keep your eyes and ears to the ground. Take note about new on City Lord Shannon as well as the royal family or anyone that plans to target Baymart. Although Shannon is dead, we need to know if we are being suspected or not. You have two days to get ready as well. Yes, your majesty. Josh, you will stay here with Army General Lucius and protect Baymart. Within this time, I expect any and every threat to be properly dealt with. Don't fail me. Yes, your majesty.